Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Battery life is often a main selling point of a particular device, but as all of you know, most of the devices that we buy these days don't have easily replaceable batteries, and over time those batteries wear down and the battery life reduces. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been noticing that my iPhone Pro 14 that I bought less than a year ago is not lasting as long as it did when I got it. And sure enough, when I jumped into the battery health section of my settings here, my battery is now at 89%, and it's been losing about 1 or 2% every two weeks or so. So my battery is basically on the decline here. And I thought it was just me, but today I also saw a tweet from Tech Daily, a fellow tech YouTuber, and his battery on his 14 Pro that he got around the same time that I did is also in a similar state of decline. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this today and also show you how you can find out exactly what your battery health is looking like so you can determine whether or not you've got a problem that Apple will fix or one that you're just going to have to live with. We got a lot to look at now, so let's dive into it. So let's take a look at what Apple's definition of a functional battery is. If you go to their iPhone battery and performance page, what you will see is that they rate the battery to retain 80% of its original capacity at 500 complete charge cycles when operating under normal conditions. And your phone comes with a one year warranty, which of course you can extend with Apple Care. And the other thing that's important to know is what a charge cycle is. Basically, this is how many times the battery has been completely drained and recharged. So if you go down to half and then fill it back up again, that is half a charge cycle, not a full one. But it does add up, and over time, the more that you charge and discharge the battery, the more it's going to wear down. Now, Apple does give you the capacity estimate but they don't easily give you the charge cycle number, which is really strange given that this is the threshold that they're telling customers they need to look for. So unless you bring your phone in, you don't get a good idea as to whether or not there's actually something wrong with your battery. But there is a way to get at that data in the settings, and it's not easy, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now this is going to change from time to time, but right now this is what's current for iOS 16. Now, if you go to privacy and security inside of your settings, what you're going to want to look for is down here at the bottom where it says analytics and improvements. And what you want to make sure is that your share iPhone and watch analytics is activated. And then if you go into the analytics data, Apple actually gives you everything that they send in for this purpose and buried inside of these analytics is your battery cycle number. So what you want to look for is this analytics log file, and you want to go to the one that's right at the bottom here that has the current date. And when you tap into this, you're going to find a huge blob of log text, and it is extensive. It's about a megabyte and a half. I blurred it out here because I have no idea what kind of personally identifying information is in here. But buried in here is just one little line called cycle count that will give you the battery cycle count number. Now, if you don't have a Mac, what you could do is grab the text here to select all of it and copy it into the iPhone's notes application. And there you can do a search for cycle count. I was looking on my computer screen here for the exact words. Cycle count, one word, and it will give you the number, which I'll show you on my computer screen here in a second. If you have a Mac accessible to you, what I found the easiest way to go about getting this number is to hit the share icon here at the top and airdrop it to yourself. And then you'll have the log file on your Mac and you can load up a text editor to do a search on it. And when you do, you'll find your cycle count number. So as you can see here, my cycle count currently is 329. So my battery health is 89% and my cycle count is 329, not 500. So if I went into the Apple store complaining about battery life, they're gonna send me away unless I wanna pay to replace the battery because I have not yet met the threshold for a battery that is running below its expected performance level. Now I have been doing an unofficial poll of my other friends who have iPhone 14 Pros and some of them are not having the battery problems that I'm having, but some are. And if we go back to uh, Tech Daily's tweet here, he posted a follow-up and mentions that he's been charging his phone mostly via MagSafe, which is Apple's wireless charging adapter. 
and I too have been charging wirelessly with Qi chargers. I've got these things all over the place. I got one here, I got one on my desk over there, I've got one on my nightstand, and I love the flexibility of just putting the phone down and having it charge while it's resting on a desk. But as you all know, the phone gets really hot when you put it in one of those things, and I'm wondering if the heat generated here is reducing the battery longevity, especially because I use wireless charging as my primary charging method. And when I need a quicker charge, what I usually do is plug it into one of those high-powered USB-C PD chargers that can push a whole lot of energy into the phone very quickly. And that also generates a good amount of heat. So I think those two factors might be leading to where I am at right now. And I'm guessing all of this analytics data that Apple collects from these phones is telling them where the threshold is to get these phones to that 80% mark around the time the warranty ends so that they don't have to do all these battery replacements. And I think that's what's going on here. So they can offer you all these cool charging features even though they kill the battery. And it looks as though everyone who's charging quickly or is charging wirelessly is having some of the same problems that I am here. And of course, the biggest challenge is that it's not cheap to swap out this battery, especially when you're a year and a half or two years out and your carrier offers you a great deal on a new phone. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we heard that the European Union is going to start mandating that phones have user replaceable batteries. And by the way, it's not just Apple that has a battery that is hermetically sealed inside of their phone. It's most manufacturers these days who don't let the user very easily swap out batteries. But if this mandate goes through, it's possible that we might see some more flexibility here. And I don't know about you, but a lot of the people in my life often get new phones because the battery stops charging, even though the phone is perfectly functional. And what's really crazy is that the $30 phone you can buy at Walmart has a user replaceable battery and a headphone jack, but your $1,200 iPhone doesn't, right? So this might change some things and perhaps give users more flexibility in being able to buy a battery two years out and get pretty much their phone back to the way it was when they first bought it. And it's certainly a lot less to recycle a battery than it is to recycle an entire phone. And I think that's what the European Union is after here. But what I wanna do is hear from all of you in the comments section, because I'm really curious to see where your batteries are at right now on your iPhones and your Android phones. And let's see if there's any correlation between wireless charging and fast charging and battery longevity, because I suspect that might be what's going on with this phone, but it's all anecdotal at this point, and I would love to get some more data from all of you. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Om De Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.